Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Peters and I'm back in the fort today. Today we're reading chapter 18 and Poppy is uh, paddling towards uh, Rye on the, in the pond. So here we go, to the lodge. Using her wood splinter as a paddle, Poppy rushed off from the shore. The raft lurched erratically until she found a way to balance it. Then, from a kneeling position, she dipped the paddle into the dark waters and began to propel herself across the pond. Repetitious cricket sounds tickled the air. From somewhere, a fox barked. A nightbird called. A frog croaked. Above, the spread of stars made Poppy think of a field, bright and a field of bright scattered seeds. The moon seemed to be as adrift as she. She gazed around, trying to get her bearings, trying to recall where the main lodge was. From the middle of the pond, everything seemed different. The moonlight did allow her to make out the humps of lodges as well as islands. They seemed all alike now. She had no idea where to go. Poppy paddled some more, moving farther over the pond, knowing she had to go somewhere. She chose at random and headed for one of the islands. From out of the darkness, she heard a splash. Coming unexpectedly, it made her jump. The next moment, her raft began to rock wildly. Only by holding on tightly did she manage to keep from tumbling off. When the waters calmed, she strained to look to the darkness to determine what had caused the sound. She saw nothing. What if it were a beaver? Poppy wondered. Would it see her? Dimly, she made out an island to her left. Its small size drew her. It would be easy to search. But after Poppy took a few more strokes, the little island seemed to have moved. Not quite believing what her eyes were telling her, Poppy stared hard. Sure enough, even as she looked, the island shifted again. She gave a few more tentative paddle strokes. Suddenly, the island moved and raised its head. Poppy gasped. It was a beaver. She had almost paddled right into it. Then to her right, there was another swell of water and a second beaver broke the pond's surface. Poppy was between them. It was the darkness that hid her. That you, Judy? Asked the newcomer. It's me grunted the first. Who's that? It's me, Joe. What are you doing? Taking a swim to cool off. The lodge is hot. Yeah, hard to sleep. Hey, did you see that mouse? Asked Judy. The one Kaz caught? Said the beaver Joe. I was sleeping right next to his cage. What about him? What a pain, Judy said. If it were up to me, I'd just give him a swat with the old tail. Hey, you know Kaz. Progress without pain. Right, sure, Joe said. I'm going back. Okay, see you. The beaver named Joe swam off. Poppy paddled after him as hard as she could. Abruptly, he dove beneath the water. Poppy waited and watched for him to resurface. When he didn't, she understood what had happened. The beaver must have gone into the lodge through an underwater passage. She scrutinized the area. Sure enough, a large mound stuck out of the water nearby. She paddled until she bumped against it, then deftly leaped from her raft to the lodge. The movement inadvertently kicked the raft away. She made a grab for it, but the wood chip had already floated out of her reach. Resigned to being where she was, Poppy took a careful look around. The lodge was a mass of sticks, twigs, logs, leaves, and vines, tightly woven together and cemented with mud. It made her think of an upside-down bird's nest. Somewhere inside was Rye. Her sense of urgency renewed. Poppy returned to the water's edge and wondered if she had the courage to swim down and find the lodge's entryway. When she reminded herself what a bad swimmer she was, she began to crawl about the lodge. She had to find a way to get in. It was at the very top of the lodge, while prying and poking amid the mud and sticks, that she discovered a hole. When she put her nose over it, she was certain she detected a flow of air and the distinct smell of beaver, or at least of Mr. Cannon, a vent hole, perhaps. Upon examining the hole closely, she found that it was big enough to get for her to crawl through. Perhaps it could lead her inside. Nervous, she crept in head first. The hole was pitch black and slimy with a sickening stench of rotting mud. It was hard to hold on. 
After going down a few inches, she paused. How long is this hole? She asked herself. Will I be able to get out fast if I have to? What's going to be at the end of it? Do I really want to do this? She answered herself in one word, Rye. She had to get to Rye. She went on. To keep from falling, she pressed her paws tightly against the slippery sides. Down she went. It seemed endless. As it happened, she was concentrating so hard, she came to the end of the hole without realizing she'd reached it. Catching herself just in time, she peered down into the lodge. And there she is at the bottom of the hole, way down here. Such light as there was came from the occasional flashing glow of fireflies. At first, Poppy thought she was looking at nothing but lumpy earth. Only gradually did she see that right below her was a room full of sleeping beavers. She gasped. There were so many. Some lay on their backs. Chins up, their teeth seemed to glow like burning embers. Some beavers were flopped over others. Others lay on their bellies, tails occasionally flipping and flapping like loose flags. In their restless sleep, they kept shifting about, moaning, grunting, and growling. It was as if a large mass of mud had come alive. From her high perch, Poppy searched out for the cage Mr. Kennedy had spoken of, the one in which Rye was being held. She found it tucked away in a corner. She even thought she saw Rye, curled up in a ball, fast asleep. How was she going to get down to him? She dared not jump. If she did, she'd land right in the midst of the beavers. That was a risk she did not want to take. Then she remembered something she'd seen on the lodge roof. Vines. Perhaps she could lower herself down, but she'd have to work fast before the beavers woke up. Poppy clawed her way back to the lodge roof and searched for a vine. When she found two twisted about a stick, she took the longest. Working fast, she tied one end of the vine to a stick, and taking its free end in her mouth, she crept back down the hole. When she reached the end again, she lowered the vine. It dangled free but it was impossible to see exactly how far the vine went. Was she too far, or was it too far, or not far enough? Poppy couldn't tell. Why was she risking her life this way, she asked herself. The answer came as before, Rye. Taking a deep breath, her heart was beating madly. She grasped the vine tightly with her front paws, wrapped her ear, her rear legs, and tail about it too, and headed down the vine head first. She reached the end. It was too short. She was dangling about 12 inches over the beavers. To go any farther, she would have to drop and land on a beaver's nose. The thought of it gave Poppy the shudders. As she tried to make up her mind what to do, Poppy's shoulders began to ache. She had to either go up or back, or, or let go or go back up. She looked up. The vent hole seemed a very long way away. She looked down. The beaver seemed enormous and powerful. What would they do to her if she dropped on them? More and more nervous, her palms grew sweaty. She shifted her grip. The, lift, the shifting made the vine sway slightly. She tried to stop it, but the swinging only increased. Suddenly, she had an idea. Carefully, she turned about. Now she held the vine just with her paws. Her legs and tail dangled. Poppy began to pump her rear legs hard. It made the vine sway even more. Back and forth she swung until she was moving in a great arc, like a pendulum. With every swing, her heart thumped. When Poppy reached the highest point of the arc, nearest to rise, she let go. Out she sailed through the air, right over the sleeping beavers, until she landed with a plop in the soft mud close to Rye's cage. There she lay, panting, heart hammering, trying to recover her breath. Had she really done it? Almost afraid to look, she lifted her head. When she saw she was beyond the beaver, she took a deep sigh of relief. She turned toward the cage. There was nothing between her and it. Though the way was clear, silently she crept forward and peered inside. A firefly flashed. She saw Rye. He was curled up in a ball, fast asleep. Poppy tried to reach to the bars to touch him. He was too far away. Rye! She called softly, Rye, and Rye lifted his sleepy head. And that is the end of that chapter.